together like acid rain down an old sewer. You, uh, including your client here in that analogy? So, you two are finally letting me in on some basic rules. What's the story? Where do you want me to start? The part where Kellogg turned out to be working for the Institute? Or the part where he told me they have Sean? The Institute. Oh boy. I've been investigating these creeps for over a year now. <laughs> the Commonwealth's boogeyman. Feared and hated by everyone. True enough. Sometimes they snatch people in the middle of the night. And sometimes they leave old synths behind to remind us that they're out there. But to this day, there's one thing nobody really knows. Where the Institute actually is. Or how to get in. Exactly. But there's one person who has to know, right? The guy who just handed them Sean. Kellogg? Huh. What about him? He had to have a way in and out. But... Well, we both know that ankle is cut off. We can talk to him? Feel like holding a seance? Yeah, if only. So, a murderer and a kidnapper gets his brains blown out by an avenging parent. Huh. <laughs> Be a great ending if we didn't still have the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth to solve. I was so blinded by anger, I... I just wanted him dead. Now look what I've done. Gets his brains blown out. Huh. His brains. You know, we may not need the man at all. You're talking crazy here, Nick. Got a fault in the old subroutines? Look, there's a place in Good Neighbor called the Memory Den. Relive the past moments in your mind as clear as the day they happened. If anyone could get a dead brain to sing, it'll be Dr. Amari, the mind behind the memories. Who's this Dr. Amari? I'll let her give you her life story in person. Let's stay focused. Hmm. Guess we're gonna need a piece of Kellogg's brain. Enough gray matter to bring to Amari and find out if this is going to work. Jesus, Nick. Gross. Seriously? I know it's grisly, but what choice do we have? We got no leads, nothing. That old Merc's brain just might have all the secrets we need to know. What exactly do we need, Nick? Kellogg's brain. It's a long shot, but Dr. Amari just might be able to get it jump-started. See what the old Merc knew. Actually, I think I already have something. Kellogg had this... this thing. Attached to his head. Cybernetics, huh? We may have just won the lottery. Whether we're riding this crazy brain train or not, we can't all go running across the Commonwealth, so... Who's coming with you? I have to go to the memory den either way, if I'm gonna introduce you to Omari. But if you want to head there together, just say so. Anything else you can tell me about the memory den? It's in Good Neighbor, a little slice of trouble northeast of ways. The memory den ain't just a fancy name. It's literal. A lot of people give up all their caps just to relive the good parts of their lives. Over and over. But not us. We're gonna try to dive deep into someone else's mind. I can meet you there, or we can head out together. I'll head out with Piper. We'll meet you there, Nick. Sounds good. You two stay out of trouble. Don't worry. We're gonna get your boy back. Just a few more steps. Hey boy. 
pieces. Thanks for your help.
return to Mama. You are going down. Absolutely. Hell yeah. That's right. Your thoughts? It's my bag. Really? And I'll just take this. Come to Mama. What have you been up to? Someone who you can extort for caps? Get lost before I get angry. Well, well, hey, all right. We'll just say your insurance is paid up for now, okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out. Someone steps through the gate the first time, they're a guest. You lay off that extortion crap. Good to see you again, Nick. Hancock? What do you care? She ain't one of us. No love for your mayor, Finn. I said let her go. You soft, Hancock. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, there'll be a new man. Come on, man. This is me we're talking about. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Why'd you have to go and say that, huh? Breaking my heart over here. Now I know you had old Finn handled back there, but a mayor's got to make a point sometimes. You all right? Not every day I get mugged and witness a murder right in front of me. You obviously haven't been living it up enough, but we won't judge you for that. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. Yeah, I feel you. Good. You stay cool, and you'll be part of the neighborhood. So long as you remember who's in charge. Hancock, nice to see you haven't lost your magic. Excellent. Well, well, Mr. Valentine, I thought you had forgotten about little old me. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Got a sec? Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social call. You're the one who can extract memories from a brain, right? Normally, we only allow our clients to experience their own memories. Now, what's this all about? We need a deep dig, Amari, but it's not gonna be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? 
putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who can make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? How much of the brain do you need, exactly? That is not an encouraging question. I suppose I'll have to make do with whatever you can find. Could you say that like Dr. Frankenstein? Igor, fetch me the brain! No, I will not. Now, do you have it? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait, that's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I... I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. But Institute technology being what it is, the brain implant could fit him. But that's an incredible risk to take. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. I'm well past the warranty date anyway. We should try plugging you into a toaster next. Hmm. Fresh toast. Uh, it's nice to know that even when I'm about to have a foreign object shoved into my noggin, you find new horrible ways to laugh at my expense. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine. Just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see what? here. Hmm? I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive your functions thoughts? could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. I'll keep that in mind. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. How do you lock memories? The implant is encoding all the mnemonic activity in the hippocampus. Think of it like computer encryption. And we don't have the password. Let's see. A single mind wouldn't be able to crack it. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. Any idea of what I'm going to see in there? I have no clue. But considering we only have a single piece of the medial temporal lobe and not the whole brain, I doubt it'll be cohesive. Nick and I are gonna share a mind? I'm not gonna see him in any compromising positions, am I? If a smart mouth was all it took to solve problems, we would have found your son by now. Um, no. You won't have to worry about that. The only memories you'll access are the ones in the implant. All right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there, and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side.
Amari. The memory loungers are complex pieces of equipment. Please don't lean on, jump on, or kick them. Yes, of course. Initiating brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. are experiencing these memories as Kellogg. This may prove disorienting at first. Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in, in her way. And she protected me from Dad. <laughs> that cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not then. People always hoping for something better. They usually end up with something worse. said the NCR would bring back the good old days, like before the big war. Don't you listen to that twaddle. I'm going to stop sending you if that's what they're teaching you. I'm going out. Where the fuck did you put my boots? Listen to me. Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life, he wasn't a complete asshole. You take this. You're old enough. You're the man of the family now. It's your job to protect us. Your father's... Hey, kid. But you won't turn out like him. You're a good boy. And all that on the radio. All useless talk. The only thing that will protect you in this world is that gun in your hand. You need to learn to use it, if you're going to survive. I... I will, Mom. I promise. I was such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. I told myself I wanted to find somewhere out from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from Dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. We'll let you down. You've always been my good boy. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you Hi. in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that in the NCR these days. No, I'm not saying this was a mistake. I, 
I'm just... Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kind of green. I know. But that's where I come in. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need. Then I... I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she'd never met me, she'd have stayed in the hub. Maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. You can give me anything you want. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. Must be my mama instincts kicking in. <laughs> who knew I had those, huh? Come on. The thing about happiness is... You only know you had it when it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but uh, you don't really believe it. You focus on the petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back by comparison with what comes after that you really understand that's what happiness felt like. You don't need to worry about me. I thought San Francisco was my chance to start fresh. I was the hot shit, the gunslinger from the hub, rolling into town with the world at my feet. Everybody knew I was the one who'd shot Valdez. And I could write my own ticket to any outfit in town. It all worked out pretty damn well. For a while. Most of it's just... Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. A lot of standing around looking tough. No, well, they sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. See this? This is what's gonna keep you and Mary safe. I promise. I know, Connie. I'm sure we're gonna be really happy here. We are. You'll see. That's no, okay. I got her. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. What did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. Another memory to try. I'll connect you. Mind if we uh, sit down and seat yourself? I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. It was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. There's always someone who wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but uh, dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. I just took it as part of the job. A little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. I didn't care where I was going. Ended up mostly wandering east. Getting as far away from San Francisco as I could, maybe. So, um... I hear you'll take care of people's 
problems. Is that right? If you pay me. Oh, we'll pay you. And uh, you'll do this. There's always someone who wanted to buy yourself. That's right. There was always a job for someone like me. Didn't matter what it was. Didn't matter who I was supposed to kill. I got pretty good at it. We pay and the job's done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it. So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. sorts of rumors about the Institute, but I figured they were just a convenient boogeyman for anything bad that ever happened. They were real, all right. They didn't know anything about operating on the surface, relied on their synths for everything. They had the resources I needed, and I had the expertise they needed. Turned into a permanent arrangement suited me just fine. The first synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but I'm not that good. But the Institute could always make more, and kept making them better each time. They still give me the creeps, but you have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. I finally ended up in the Commonwealth. I kinda ran out of road. Plus, I'd come to terms with life. I wasn't gonna be stupid enough to get mixed up with caring about other people again. It was just me against the world. And the world had it coming. As you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. Hey. Warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. We're running out of brain here. Uh, ah, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis suspended. All the computers are still working. That's good. Checking through the logs. Hopefully it's all just. Find it. Pod C6, down the hall near the end. I never knew why we didn't just refreeze the rest of them. But we had our orders. <laughs> I guess the old man didn't want so many loose ends. Too bad he left alive the one person he shouldn't have. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving her alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft, pre-war vault dweller. Even if she somehow got thought out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but, uh, I never liked to. 
But it was better this way. Better than taking his kid and leaving him alive. I was now the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, they came to me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so... This one stood out. I didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course, neither did they. Not really. <clears throat> I was now the instant. I never knew why. The eggheads never liked taking orders from a dirty, contaminated degenerate like me. But they needed me. And I made sure they knew it. I never knew why we didn't just re This is the one. Here. Open it. through that again. I found hey. another intact memory. Whenever you're ready. Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent memory. So, good news, I think. It wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid. Like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'd be back to normal business before too long. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up. Kellogg. How are things going? One of these days, you're gonna get your head blown off just barging in here like that. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said that. The new breed of synths could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the coursers, they weren't built to blend in. They were killing machines, pure and simple. Smarter. Stronger and faster than almost any real human. I'm just glad they were always on my side. Big crisis this time. New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. Yeah. 
We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. But the bride. Wow. Some heads are gonna roll for this. Nobody Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Do you have a moment? Affirm. You're taking me home with my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Bye. Teleportation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. Hi. might have had. No one's ever Friends done this before. Over, no How do you I'm feel? To forget about Next time I have to watch someone's life story, I want popcorn. Well, if you're cognizant enough to joke, I think we can safely say that you're out of critical condition. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? There's more than one person who knows about the Institute. <sighs> Virgil, that scientist who escaped. I didn't know Institute scientists could defect. This changes everything. He could answer all sorts of questions. Where did the memory say he was? The glowing sea? That can't be right. No one would risk going there, not even to hide. Why? What makes the glowing sea so dangerous? The name says it all radiation. So much that nothing there could possibly live. Nothing pleasant. Navigating radioactive hazards is nothing new, but the glowing sea can... kill a man in seconds. That's why it doesn't make sense. Virgil fleeing into that hell. The exposure alone. If we need to find Virgil, then I'm going after him. If you're going to go, be prepared. You'll need some way to combat the radiation there. It's called the Glowing Sea for a reason. How do I fight that much radiation, Doctor? There are chemical compounds. Radax, Radaway. You'd need as much as you could carry. Maybe more. A sealed environment suit would be great if you could find one. Or maybe one of those suits of power armor? That would be perfect. I'll find a way to get through the rads. Don't worry. Good luck. And be safe. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Nick. <clears throat> Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. You want to try for round two? Let's go. What? What are you talking about? You sounded like Kellogg just then. Did I? Huh. Mari said there might be some mnemonic impressions left over. 
Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. Or I could head back to Diamond City, since you've got company already. Let's get going, Nick. Been one heck of a ride so far. Let's see where it takes us next. <laughs> 